Range has been one of the biggest headwinds for electric vehicle adoption. When Tesla first set out on its journey to electrify the world, even their first high-price, ultra-low-volume vehicle, the Roadster, only had 231 miles of range in 2007. Thirteen years later, Tesla's premium Model S vehicle finally surpassed 400 miles of range for the first time. This was a huge achievement as Elon Musk and the team at Tesla had been working to reduce weight, maximize regenerative braking, lower the car's drag coefficient, and produce the highest efficiency powertrain possible. This was the first 400-mile production electric vehicle. Yet just four months later, near the end of 2020, Tesla also unveiled a 520-plus mile Model S, completely blowing away their previous achievements. While it's set for release later in 2021, this will be done in major part by incorporating Tesla's new 4680 battery cells into this high-performance vehicle to unlock more range, more power, and other capabilities. Now, the Model S is a mid-volume, fairly high price point electric vehicle, and along with its SUV counterpart, the Model X, Tesla hasn't produced more than about 100,000 of these vehicles in any year. While deliveries have come down over time, Tesla intends to bring back Model S and X to this 100K level with its new Plaid offerings. But regardless, this isn't a mass market vehicle. Tesla's lower priced high volume Model 3 sedan and Model Y crossover are aimed at the masses and currently boast a maximum range of 353 miles and 326 miles respectively. What's interesting, however, is that for the first time, Tesla is planning to bring their Model Y into production built in Europe at their new Berlin Gigafactory that will start producing these vehicles by the end of this year. And we know that Giga Berlin will be ramping up Tesla's new 4680 battery cells to start. Now, during Tesla's Battery Day event, Tesla talked about their diversified cathode approach, and many took this to mean that Tesla would be outsourcing batteries from various suppliers for their vehicle lineup. For example, the iron-based cathode is the cheapest type of cathode that Tesla plans to use. Iron is abundant and cheaper than other popular battery metals such as nickel, but the iron-based batteries have a much lower energy density than other battery chemistries, which means that whatever vehicle these are applied to will have reduced range. So Tesla is using these batteries instead to provide high cycle life even though the range might be lower. This makes sense for future robo-taxis which will be charged very often, the standard range Model 3, or even Tesla's Megapack battery which is charged daily and requires many cells. Since Tesla is battery cell constrained, cheaper iron-based batteries are perfect for these use cases. It's assumed that Tesla may be looking at China's cattle, CATL, as a potential supplier for these types of iron-based batteries which cattle specializes in. Then in the mid-range, Tesla will use nickel and manganese batteries for its Powerwall, Model Y, and the Model S and X based on these images. Since Tesla currently produces the 2170 battery cells jointly with Panasonic, and they also have the 18650 cells that are used in Model S and X, Tesla wants its battery suppliers, including Panasonic and LG Chem, to continue boosting cell production to provide for these vehicles. And finally, Tesla's brand new high nickel 4680 battery cell that Tesla will be producing on its own will enable vehicles such as the Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi. Now this is very exciting for Tesla's future, but there's a few things that don't make much sense. The first question is, where does Tesla's Model S Plaid Plus fit in? the one with the 520 miles of range. Did Tesla just take the high nickel batteries from their pilot factory in Fremont and put them into the Model S to achieve this range boost or something else? And secondly, Giga Berlin will start by producing only Model Ys, yet Elon Musk has confirmed in the past that Giga Berlin will also be producing 4680 battery cells right from the start. So how exactly does that fit in here? Will the mass market Model Y be getting high nickel batteries? So no, this isn't going to be the case. During battery day, Elon Musk was asked what happens if a new battery chemistry, like solid state for example, is discovered down the road. Could Tesla's new battery factory be adapted to use this? And Elon said yes, the battery cell plants could be tweaked to use different chemistries. But what wasn't made clear is that each of Tesla's battery cathode approaches will work with the 4680 battery cell. 
Tesla will be ramping these to supplement suppliers. This means that Tesla likely didn't put its high nickel chemistry into the Plaid Plus Model S. They're still using nickel plus manganese, but they're using it inside the 4680 battery cell. According to Tesla's battery day presentation, the 4680 battery cell's massive range increase is attributable to four elements. The cell design itself, including switching to a larger form factor, removing the battery tabs and other innovations. These changes account for 16% of increased range. This is still using the same chemistry, nothing else being changed. The new structured battery pack also adds another 14% range. Their new anode material adds 20% across the board, and the cathode adds just 4% in range. So Tesla's cathodes actually have the least impact on increasing vehicle range. This means that although Giga Berlin will be using 4680 battery cells for Model Y, it will not be the high nickel version. But nonetheless, it should see an enormous range boost even with the other cathode types. The current long range Model Y with the traditional 2170 batteries and no structural battery pack has a range of 326 miles. If Tesla just uses their old chemistry but with the new cells and design, the long range Model Y would see 423 miles of range. Adding in the new anode and the new cathode materials, this actually increases by 54% to 502 miles of range for a Model Y. Now 502 miles might be a little overkill for Tesla and could cannibalize their other vehicle sales. At this time, it makes more sense for Tesla to offer a slightly higher range, but they could go up all the way to 400 miles very easily for the long range Model Y and simply use fewer batteries in the vehicle to reduce costs and perhaps lower the price of the car and also have extra batteries left over that they could use to produce more vehicles. Tesla is still battery constrained, and so at least until they ramp up battery production further, allocating batteries efficiently is more important for the company to sell more vehicles. Another strategy that Tesla can potentially use when they're ready to start producing the standard range Model Y is to move down a level and use the iron-based cathodes similar to what they do for the Made in China Model 3. This will reduce overall range, but because the vehicle is so efficient, it will still be quite impressive. The Model 3 sold in China uses LFP batteries which are iron based lithium iron phosphate and the car has 292 miles of WLTP range. WLTP is usually a higher number than the EPA estimate range used in the United States, but the Model 3 still has great range for the Chinese market. So a Model Y with iron based batteries would be worse than a Model 3, but with Tesla's 4680 battery cells even iron based looks good. The best thing about iron-based batteries is reduced cost, and these savings could partially be passed on to the consumer to create a very compelling and competitive Model Y for the European market. Overall, Tesla has a number of options for Giga Berlin in combination with the 4680 battery cells and non-high nickel cathodes. The 4680 form factor really opens up many possibilities. They can create a very decent standard range Model Y, perhaps near the equivalent of 350 miles of WLTP range using cheaper iron based batteries. That could be a very strong offering for the European markets given a lowered price point. Or another option is to continue using nickel and manganese based batteries for a long range Model Y equivalent to up to 400 miles of EPA range. Another solid offering to compete with the legacy German automakers in the European markets. Let us know in the comments if you think it's feasible for Tesla to choose either of these options with the 4680 battery cell or what other different options that you see Tesla going with. Please hit the like button and subscribe and thank you guys so much for watching.